<sighs> we got a warm morning today. It's like 32 degrees right now. And we're about halfway through winter. We like to take advantage when we can get wood. It kind of never stops up here. When you live somewhere cold and your heat source is a wood stove, you're always on the lookout for wood. So we had a couple down trees. We're gonna get these split and stacked. We're making blueberry waffles for breakfast. We've got our batter right here. I have some of our awesome bubbly sourdough starter in here as well. And I have never done it this way, but we are actually going to try using a cast iron waffle maker on our wood stove. And I'm not quite sure how good of an idea that is today because it is quite warm outside and we need our wood stove to be very, very hot too. All right, the verdict is in. That one stuck just a little bit. They look pretty good. The blueberries mixed in a lot with the batter, so they're not the most appetizing color, but I'm sure they're gonna taste good. We're gonna get this hot again, cleaned out, and try it again with some more oil. Well, I had hoped this would go differently, but it did not. In fact, this went quite poorly. And I know Eric's probably just thrilled about the hot mess that I have made on our wood stove. This one's sticking and it's also over full. So it was spilling out a little bit too. Definitely take it from me what not to do when you were cooking waffles over a wood stove. We're gonna get this party moved over to our propane stove and see if we can do a better job over there.
Well, I guess third time is the charm, or maybe it was Eric. He did a great job on this waffle. I think the trick was high heat, and we definitely used butter instead of the coconut oil, and that seemed to work. And this looks delicious. We're gonna eat. We're doing some fixing today, fixing maintenance and modifications. Last week we took this Polaris out and we snapped the back bumper completely in half. The one that came on here is made of aluminum. It's not really meant for towing. I had the local Polaris store order me a new one and this one is steel. This is like a towing bumper. We got a nice big hitch for it. The cool thing about this hitch is when you're hitting turns with your sled, it'll actually kind of move inside this little hitch where it goes. So we're almost done. We just got to get this little back piece put back on. It's a nice hitch. How's this going there? That comes out way too easy. Well, on our Scandic, we've been having uh, problems with the lights blowing out, the tail light and the headlight, and we traced it down to a part called a voltage regulator, and this regulates the voltage when you kind of rev up the engine. It'll keep it about, I think it keeps it between 12 and 14 volts so you don't blow out your lights. So we got the new one here. I know I'm gonna have to rewire the plug because this plug doesn't fit this machine. So we'll have to cut that and wire that. And it's two bolts, but it is extremely hard to get to. It's way down in there. So I'm gonna try to move some stuff around and hopefully we can we can undo it and get this new one put in. So it looks like the only way I'm going to be able to get there is to remove this little brake caliper. Two bolts and hopefully we can reach in there. If I can't fit my arm in there, I better I'll come over here and see if she can get her little arm in there. So this is the original one. This machine has 7,000 miles on it. You can tell, look where it just burnt it right there. Something was going on with it.
Well, good news and bad news. Bad news is I've been out here for probably about two hours trying to figure this thing out. And I have tried every single combination of wiring on that new voltage regulator and it kept blowing the fuse. So what I did is I took the old one, I cleaned up the ground, I rewired it. There was a wire that was burnt out. I put it back in and I went out and really got on the throttle and that should have popped the taillight bulb, but the taillight is still working. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the new headlight in and I think we might've fixed it. If not, we're gonna have to go back to square one. The reason I just put the taillight in is the taillights are really inexpensive and the pack comes with two. So I had two chances on that. The headlight, I only have one headlight left and it's kind of a nicer LED one and the headlights are expensive. So this one's blown. Let's put that other one in. working time will tell uh, we got to get the players pulled over working on that next We've had pretty much, not no snow, but not much snow at all. I think we've only snow plowed twice this year. And we're gonna do some modifications to the plow. A lot of times when I'm using this thing, I get a lot of snow coming around the plow and I wanted to be able to hold more snow in it. So I got these things called plow wings and it's a little kit you can buy and you can weld them on or you can bolt them on. I think I'm gonna bolt these on. So we got two of these, some hardware and we'll see what it does, but we don't really have any snow right now to plow. so. We'll have to wait to try her out. Is that okay? They're kind of see how kind of crooked already. They're kind of see how they are. Oh yeah, because it sits in like a rainbow, huh? So either we can put just two. It's a little crooked though. That's good. actually worked better than I thought it was going to. It really held the snow in there. Uh, a lot of times when I'm doing long stretches, like a, across the middle of our little area here, I'll get a lot of snow coming out the sides. Uh, with this thing, I can kind of uh, keep it all in there. And with these wings, I believe I'll still be able to use the kind of uh, tilt feature on here. So cool. We'll just have to wait on some more snow and it's just been crazy around here these past few days. We got up to 39 degrees Fahrenheit and it was actually dumping rain last night. Not even like a mix of snow and rain, just pure rain. And we've had a lot of snow melting and it just started raining again. So hopefully we'll get some snow here again soon. It's January.
Well, we're gonna do one more project for the night and that's the dog sled. It seems like we're always working on this thing and modifying it. We got this new snow machine, at least new to us. It's an 03 and it sits a lot lower, at least the hitch does. So the dog sled is kind of tilted when we're riding around with the dogs in it. So I'm gonna put a new hitch on the, on the uh, trailer that's kind of lower down, that way it'll level it out. And I'm also gonna extend it a little bit. We noticed that when we were on the river with this thing and we came like on a downhill and a turn, the front of this dog sled was actually getting really close to the little rack on here and we don't want to crack our little glass. So I'm going to get the welder, get the generator fired up, and we're going to get to work. Good. here cleaning up our nest boxes in the chicken coop they unfortunately like to lay in them a lot in the winter and we end up with a lot of droppings in here instead of eggs since they're not laying in the winter months but it is only mid-january and they have totally started to lay again we're starting to get a couple eggs consistently every day so I need to get these cleaned up and looking good for the ladies to lay unfortunately this winter was a little bit of a harder winter for our chickens. We've had them for a few winters here and they generally speaking do really well. We have had some issues with minor frostbite, but this year in November, we had a really cold spell and a few of our chickens were undergoing a molt, which is where they lose their feathers. And that is the reasoning for all of these extension cores that you may see and heat lamps. And we just were scrambling that month to figure out what to do. Unfortunately, we lost a few of our chickens because of those extreme temperatures. Thankfully, the heat lamps and closing up the coop was what we needed to do to get the girls back to being, you know, healthy and being able to make it through the winter. They're totally good now, as you can tell, but it was a little bit unfortunate because we didn't really see that one coming just since they have done well in the past. I'm gonna get this over to our compost pile. Come back and get the rest. Where did I put this one? I forget. I think this one 
think they kind of go wherever we wish. All done? We're making a winter treat for our chickens. We have some steamed potatoes and then I've got a salmon filet that we've gifted to them. And I'm just gonna mix this up with a little bit of moose tallow for them. Protein is obviously good for chickens. We know that they like to eat lots of bugs normally, which they're not getting any of that right now. And the fat and the carbohydrates is also really good for them in the winter months because it's so cold and it just helps give them that energy and keep them a little bit warmer.
We also feed our chickens a mixture of grains that we make them throughout the winter and it has to be dry most of the time because it's freezing outside. However, we have this really weird warm up spell and I have set aside some grains that I soaked for them. They like it a lot better that way and they are going to be very delighted about this treat. Looks like we got two eggs today too. Do you see all these bees? We're out here checking the bees. They are all still alive. Very exciting stuff. And they still have a few more months to go, but I, I feel pretty confident that they're, they're gonna make it or they've already made it, even though we're still in the middle of winter. Yes, it just has something good. I mean, they're, they're loud. This is actually a really good time to check on the bees because I haven't been out here scratching them. And so when you do that, it makes them a lot louder they'll get a little more aggravated in there but they're pretty loud right now and that's probably because of the warm temperatures and i can see there's all these dead bees out here which is a great sign that means that they've been doing their cleansing flights which is where they come out and go to the bathroom they don't make it back in but it's important that they don't go to the bathroom inside their hive so it is a good sign to see the bees coming out and it is a great sign when you put your ear up to this styrofoam and hear a really loud buzzing there's a really healthy hive inside of there This weather is just crazy, very unexpected. We've lived here, this will be our fourth, fourth winter and there's always a little bit of a period where it warms up, but this one is, it's weird. A lot of stuff's melting. We didn't have a lot of snow to begin with and stuff just melted. So it's awful for ice fishing and snow machining. It's been windy and the roads are really icy and slippery, but we still have got something good for dinner plans. So we're gonna head inside.
so looking. Oh my gosh. You ready for your first one? Yes. Here we go. Well, I think Errol and I both agree that moose enchiladas is one of our favorite meals, and that's what we're having tonight. We cooked a moose roast, which shrunk down quite a bit, and some mole sauce. And to make a mole sauce, it's pretty easy. You use dehydrated ancho peppers, and we use some chicken broth. We're going to shred it, and we're going to start rolling up some enchiladas. So one thing you just have to do, in my opinion, with enchiladas is you gotta dip them in the sauce. The tortilla, you roll it up. We're actually gonna do this a little different than we usually do. We're gonna put them in this pan and we're gonna cook them for just a minute or so with a little bit of cheese on top at the end. These are gonna be awesome. Looking forward to this. You see that? Yes, I do. You want a little pad? Oh my gosh. Thank you. How many you want? Three at least to start with? Yes. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh whoops, I got four for me. Sure. Is that my knife? <laughs> yeah. Here, that one too? Uh, I don't think I'll need one. Okay, you ready to dig in? Let's see how it try. Let's see how it tastes. Bon appetit. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's weird. I was actually meant to cheers <laughs> you on that one. You tell me how it is. <laughs> that sauce. I feel like the sauce really absorbed the. I'm sorry, the tortilla really absorbed the sauce. Oh my gosh, well. that's like baking it. It really baked into it. It's good. We didn't bake it last time. No, it was, it was tasty. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's probably the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. What do you think about the meat? I think the meat was. It rocks. Wonderful. It's I amazing. didn't know it was gonna be so tender. It oh rocks was really tender. Do you like the green one? I like it. I just didn't know if I liked it with this. Yeah. I like these alone. They don't even need anything else. They're spicy. They're so good. Like some mm. thinly sliced cabbage and sour cream. Mm -hmm. Or more cuber cheese would be really good. It's all worth it at the end. This is so good.